Viewer discretion is advised. The boys were playing soccer in the middle of the dirt road when one of them spotted a pink pinata in front of a nearby house that resembled something between a horse and a goat. As kids, they didn't think anything of it and thought they were lucky to find some candy or maybe even money inside of it. Yet, one of the boys, Will, felt like something was off about it and didn't approach it. His friend, Ken, on the other hand, ran over to it, but when he got within a few feet of it, he froze. He called out to Will, yelling that he couldn't move before he couldn't even talk a few seconds later. Frightened, Will took a step back, unwilling to even help his friend. The piñata started walking towards Ken, its cartoonish eyes analyzing him as it approached. Will knew he should have ran, but yet he was too afraid to move. That piñata then headbutted Ken in the stomach, over and over and over again, thrashing into him. Will could faintly hear Ken's bones cracking, yet his expression remained completely frozen in fear. Then candy spurted out from Ken's body. Hundreds of pieces littered the ground as the demonic toy turned its eyes towards Will. He ran away and never looked back. No body was ever found. Hello everybody, I'm The Rubber. Today, we bring you a SCP Foundation Euclid Class Object SCP-956. SCP-956, also known as Child Breaker, appears to be an extremely colorful piñata resembling a four-legged animal that is a cross between various species. However, after initial testing, 956 is anything but a paper mache toy meant to be broken. Foundation researchers determined that 956 was actually composed of glue, fur from an unknown creature, and most disturbingly, human tissue. Contrary to its appearance, 956 is completely immune to any type of blunt force trauma and crushing. Regardless of the amount of weight or force behind it, 956's physical integrity will not falter, and in some cases, it has managed to damage the vices used in attempts to crush it. 956 appears to only be in a docile state, waiting, until children under the age of 12 get within around 15 feet of it. Upon reaching the range of activation for 956, the child will become unable to move after around 7 to 28 seconds, becoming paralyzed in the last stance that they held. While this does not kill the victim, they cannot move or speak, but are able to see and feel, as suggested by incredibly fearful and rapid eye movements. After a few more seconds, 956 will then begin to inflict sudden and incredible blunt force trauma on its victim directed at their torsos until they break in half or are opened up. Once they are, candy of an unknown kind will burst out from inside the victims, ranging from 23 to 1,323 pieces. These pieces of candy are thus designated as SCP-956-1. If the victim is somehow managed to be moved approximately 36 feet away from 956 successfully, they will be spared from being cracked open. Unfortunately, they will still be frozen in place, and no victims have ever been recorded as recovering from that state. These victims usually die rather shortly after this occurs, due to severe dehydration of the body and their organs. When Foundation researchers examined the corpses of such victims, they saw that due to the intense dehydration, the bodies became brittle, like that of a piñata. Furthermore, due to this research, the Foundation was able to determine where the human tissue came from in relation to 956. Pieces of human tissue were seen to be halfway converted into pieces of the unknown candy from inside the organs of its victims. The longer they stayed within the range of 956, the more conversion of tissue to candy took place. Anyone over the age of 12 who consumed 956-1 underwent seizures in mere minutes, and a small percentage suffered from heart attacks. Around only a third of those survived the ordeal. On the other hand, if a child under the age of 12 consumes the candy, they will stand up straight with their arms stretched outward, and the following will occur in the following sequence. First, they experience rapid hair loss. Then, paper mache will sprout from the skin. And finally, an extremely painful restructuring of their bone and muscles. 
After an agonizing nine minutes, the transformation will be completed and the victim will then have become another instance of 956. None have survived the transformation, nor has anyone have had the transformation prevented once 956-1 has been consumed by a child under 12. Outside of testing, 956 has begun showing capabilities of locomotion, as observed in a security feed which shown that 956 was wandering around its cell, tracing the perimeter of the room. It did this for about an hour before staring at a spot on the wall. Review of the footage has shown that it was facing this wall after returning to docile state during previous tests. Dr. N, the researcher responsible for 956, realized a horrifying implication. After reviewing the footage, he ordered his assistant to keep watching over the live feed of 956's containment. Keep your eyes on that thing. If it moves, call me immediately. He ejected the recording tape and hurried towards the site director's office. Hello and good morning, sir. Forgive the lack of formality, but please allow me to get right to the point with 956. I believe, and with good reason, that the piñata should have its safe classification removed and have it be replaced with Euclid. The site director, interrupted in the middle of his tea, said bewilderedly, I would have preferred that you knock before entering next time, but for now, speak. I think it's best that you see for yourself, sir. He handed the tape and the site director played it on his computer. So it moves and stares at the wall. What about it? Dr. N cleared his throat. Sir, directly east of our current site is an elementary school. It was only about a few kilometers away. It sensed its victims and it's aiming for those kids. The site director pondered for a moment and then made a swift decision. Hmm. All right. Access granted to change SCP-956's classification from safe to Euclid effective immediately. Thank you, sir. As a preventative measure, 956 will be transferred to another site that is far enough from any school or playground. It was a precaution which relieved Dr. N greatly. Good call, sir. If my boy is still studying there and falls victim to that creepy thing, Dr. N said with a forced smile on his face, what happened to your boy? if you don't mind me asking. He went missing months ago, was playing with his best friend when it happened. Both kids went missing on the same day. Would you like to see his picture? He wasn't really interested, but he thought it would provide Dr. N some comfort, so he said yes. He shuddered when he saw the picture. His name is Will, the one on the left. He would be turning 12 in another two months. My condolences, doctor. A few weeks later, after 956 was transferred to another site, no other incident has happened similarly so far. Regardless of its state of inactivity, researchers have begun routinely reviewing footage to determine if it will move and for what reason. Dr. N requested to meet the site director in his office one day. He walked into the office and threw down a folder on his desk. The site director flipped through the folder mindlessly. What's all this? A child under the age of 12 consumes the candy, they will stand up straight with their arms stretched outward and the following will occur in the following sequence. First, they experience rapid hair loss. Then, paper mache will sprout from the skin. And finally, an extremely painful restructuring of their bone and muscles. Yeah? What about it? How the hell do we know about this? What did we do that allowed us to find out the effect of those candies on a child? The psych director took off his glasses, sighed, and rubbed at his temple. Answer me! And I thought you'd never find out. It was a few years ago when we heard about the piñata and went out to recover it. We got to the scene, but it was, well, it was already too late for the other kid. Poor boy was killed by that damn piñata. We found your boy crying beside his friend. We took him back along with the SCP and the body of his friend. We detained Will for a few days for observation and would apply amnestic before sending him back. On the day of his release, he was sitting in the waiting room while procedures were underway. He was left alone there, and for some reason, some idiot who worked there had the funny idea of having a bowl full of those cursed candies on the desk. Any child wouldn't think twice to pluck one out without supervision, and he did. At this point, the doctor was already sobbing. When we're back to the room, he was already contorting on the floor. It was the last stage before he turned. There was nothing we could have done. I'm sorry. Dr. N broke down, 
He took out the picture of his son and mourned at the desk. The thought of Will turning into a predatory pinata was too much for him to bear. The doctor's son was gone, left only the memories of him in his mind and the report of an anomaly acquired from his tragic death. Remember to check out my new animation channel, The Rubber Talks, where I share my life story, thoughts, and opinions. Just click on the link in the description to enter the rubber's world. I hope you enjoyed today's video. Which SCP do you want to see in the next video and why it is interesting? Let us know in the comment below. We will draw your story and share it with the world. Don't forget to click like, subscribe to the channel, and hit the bell. Please share it to your friends if you like this video. Thank you so much for watching and we will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.